Look, I, I want to thank everybody for, com for coming out this morning. Uh, we have a great audience here as I look around. Uh, we see bankers, city officials, civic leaders, agency leaders, community leaders, nonprofit leaders, all of this leadership. It's a powerful coalition uh, that we formed here today, and, uh, and I'm happy to have you to be part of it and come out today. So we're here for several reasons, uh, but, but most of all, to kind of celebrate the fact that the Community Reinvestment Act, uh, a law that was passed oh, almost 50 years ago, 46 years ago, uh, finally got some new rules, and those new rules were well overdue. And we wanted to come out here to Oak Hill because here you see CRA at work. So when you look over my shoulder, you actually see the impact that we can have when banks, when the city of Birmingham or a city, uh, when developers and all of our leadership gets together, we can create new affordable housing. And that's what we've done in this community. So last week, the new rules were announced. Now, I'm not going to get you know, too bogged down into to actually what they are. But I will say this, the CRA is an important tool. I mean, it's very important. It's a way, of course, that we ensure that banks meet the credit needs of our communities, including communities like Oak Hill, communities here in the end, so the communities here in Birmingham. So for those of us who have followed those debates oh, over the past, few years and commented to the regulators and you know advocated for a stronger and more stringent performance evaluations we we actually did that uh, we're not surprised by the outcomes of the new CRA and we're not all the way pleased but we're still going to celebrate the outcomes anyway uh, it's been a lot of debate over the past four years around CRA uh, as a matter of fact had the uh, uh, proposals that were made by one of the regulatory agencies four or five years ago been enacted, we probably be having a protest as opposed to having a celebration. And so, you know, just to say this about CRA, the update number one, as I said, was long overdue. It's been almost 28 years since CRA was updated. And the new rules reflect a lot of input from a lot of people, including community leaders, including advocates. And I will say that even though it says on a program, well, it does say BBRC, but I guess I'm speaking from my position as chairman of the NCRC board. And so we do know that CRA now has been expanded. It reflects a broader understanding about how to combat racial injustice in our country. And we know we need to. CRA was enacted uh, to reverse and eliminate 20th century redlining, 20th century redlining. And that kind of redlining, which has caused many communities to suffer, has not been reversed. But projects like this go a long way toward reversing them. So uh, some of the things about the CRA proposal fell short. Uh, we were really adamant about there being a racial component you know, we talked a lot about closing the racial wealth gap. We thought that that was an opportunity that um, that the regulators missed. And we, we also know that uh, there are still challenges. Cynical groups and lobbyists and, and others are still challenging this law that makes projects and programs like this possible. So, uh, so I just want to say that to our bankers in the audience. Uh, we know that CRA was strengthened and it may tighten up a little bit. It may make it harder to get that outstanding rating. But I will say this about the members of Building Alabama Reinvestment, members of NCRC are ready to partner with you because we want you to get outstanding ratings and we also want you to do outstanding work. And so I think all of that's important. So. I want to uh, move ahead. I didn't want to get too long. Get long. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get too long. <laughs> that was the mayor, I think. So oh, I think it was, means I can stay up here as long as I want to. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so but 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 I think it is important. We can look around and we see CRA. We see CRA at work. 
you know, new houses, new affordable houses, building houses in communities with appreciating assets. So this is a good example, and which is why we wanted to come out here today. And so uh, I mentioned the collaborative efforts, uh, the city of Birmingham, developers, and we have a lineup of speakers who are going to share some information with you. And so let me start by, before presenting any of them, acknowledging a couple of my colleagues. I'll acknowledge Ed, who's gonna, who you're going to hear from. But in his absence, John Taylor, who was chairman and CEO of the NCRC, when uh, 10 years ago uh, we thought about the affordable housing crisis that our country is in, and, uh, and at that time, those of us and, and many of you were complaining about it, decrying it, you know, saying how bad it was. But what we decided to do was to do something about it. And so we, we literally put our money where our miles were and made an investment. And that investment is what created growth by NCRC. And so thank you all for, for, for supporting growth. Um, we were able to organize realtors, contractors, and other nonprofit organizations to do just what you see being done over my shoulder. So, in other words, so so now I'm going to move on. Um, we got a few people who are going to come up and talk. Uh, we're going to hear from the city councilwoman from District Eight, uh, Carol Clark. Uh, she's going to share with you Paul Carruthers uh, of Regions Bank. Paul is the regional community affairs manager. Um, Alex Morton of First Horizon Bank, he is the market president. We chose those banks because they were pivotal and they were first or among the first to support growth in Birmingham. So we thought it would be, you know, ideal on this celebration of CRA to hear from some bankers as well. I mentioned earlier that Ed is going to back cleanup. But so now it's my pleasure to bring up the mayor whose administration has embraced growth like no other city in America. Uh, we appreciate, Mayor, your partnership, and we look forward to more celebrations in the months and years to come. Mayor Whitman. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So I'm looking at your faces. And I know you all went really hard in the paint last week. <laughs> I see some of us are still sluggish this morning. I just want you to know I feel the same. <laughs> I say that because I mean it. <laughs> Definitely going to get a donut soon. I would like to thank the sponsors of the Krispy Kreme as well. Whoever did that, you touched my heart. Thank you so much. That's another service. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This job has a lot of peaks um, and valleys. And I think one of the peaks is what we've done intentional about housing and neighborhood revitalization in our city. Um, but I think it's important to talk about the valley that was created when Birmingham was founded in 1871. Housing was not equal. It wasn't. Uh, we not only had red line neighborhoods, but we had sincere significant poverty. And not just significant poverty, but concentrated poverty. And families in our community who had children, they didn't have a front yard, they didn't have a backyard to play safely in. You fast forward to what Bob spoke of, related to why the Community Reinvestment Act, why it was enacted and some of the rules changes um, that we hadn't had since 26 years. Um, so today is important. Today is important because we are still working these many years later um, to break up concentrated poverty. We're still working these many years later to find a way to create opportunity for families in our community to have homes, uh, for their children to be in a position to be able to place safely in the front yard and or backyard. And so I think Oak Hill is a reflection of that. And there's so many partners that have made this happen. So the first person I want to start with 
by thinking is Bob Dickerson. Bob, I want to I want to look you squarely in your face and tell you thanks for holding me accountable. Um, thanks for making this remain a priority in this administration. Um, for the advisement, for the guidance, for the direction, for pouring into us as well as making sure the partners we need to hold accountable, we use our platform to do that. So genuinely, thank you. But I also want to thank Grove. Ed. <laughs> you and your entire team. Uh, it has been an honor to work with. Um, this work would not be possible without you. To all of our banking partners that are present here, uh, this work would not be possible without you. You know, with banks um, in Birmingham, Birmingham's relationship to the banking community as it relates to financial services is no secret. Um, we once held our own in the southeast right right behind Charlotte um, in the 80s and 90s. And we know a lot of things have changed in the 2000s. But I'll say this to my the financial services organizations that are here present and for those online. Um, do you want to voluntarily do the right thing or do you want to be forced to do the right thing? Right. You're presented with those two options. Which one do you prefer? Do you want to voluntarily do the right thing? Or do you want to be forced to do the right thing? These changes in CRA gives another leverage um, for you to choose either. Um, but I hope you voluntarily continue to do the right thing and invest in communities. Invest Because investing in communities, you're investing in families. You want a return? I think you'll get a return. Um, but the return offers quality of life to be better for our citizens in the city where you serve your customers. The last note I'll make is this. What we started here has spread to Woodlawn and it has spread to Pratt City. And we'll continue our work with NCRC. Um, the other thing I want to do is acknowledge President Dr. Darrell O'Quinn of the Birmingham City Council. I want to acknowledge Crystal Smitherman, who represents District 6. And I also want to acknowledge um, City Council Carol Clark, who represents this district we're standing in. We have work to do. Um, Bob, as it relates to CRA, uh, let's continue to hold everybody accountable to do their part. Yep. And everybody, I'm going to go get my donut. Thank you. <laughs> One last note, because I acknowledged him when he walked up, but I want to do it in front of everybody. Um, the coolest community president of all 23 communities is here, everybody. And that is Mr. Gunn. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, NCRC Growth. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, I am Carol Clark. I'm proud to serve District 8, where you're sitting and standing right here today. And it's a great occasion. You know, I come to, I guess, this celebration of the evolution of CRA from a few perspectives, um, not just serving as a city councilor in a city that desperately needs the impact that this regulation can can bring to our neighborhoods, but also as a you know past affiliations with these two banks, who are leading, who are topping the list, both Regions Bank and First Horizon in its earlier form uh, in this community as Iberia Bank, where I had community development roles in each of these institutions, so I know. Uh, from an insider perspective, how seriously they take this work. And so uh, congratulations to you both for leading the charge and leading the pack and making this possible through your investments in the, in the growth fund. Um, and I'm, I'm also coming at this work from another angle in my private life uh, through a recent affiliation with a neighbor works organization called Neighborhood Housing Services of Birmingham, where I recently became CEO. And before I became CEO, we were a counseling partner uh, in this development and helped several purchasers with pre-purchase uh, counseling 
and uh, earning their HUD certificate through participation in our workshops. So we look forward to continuing that partnership, which to anyone who hasn't purchased yet, who's interested, neighborhood housing services can certainly help. And although I'm elected uh, by the people who reside in District 8, all of us represent all of Birmingham, and we're so delighted that this love is spreading across the city. And that, you know, because all of our neighborhoods, so many of them are disinvested and can really benefit from what you're gonna spark through your continued investment. Uh, I see one of my board members, uh, Joe, and I know you all are working, Joe Ayers of the Woodlawn United, um, who serves on the NHS board. And I know you've been to Woodlawn, uh, you're coming to Pratt City, and then you're coming to uh, do a lot of work in the Smithfield community under Choice Neighborhood. So this is gonna, you know, this is gonna, you know, spread out all over our neighborhoods. So let's all be happy and just thankful to NCRC, which when I was in banking, you know, whatever, when they say jump, we'd say how high. <laughs> Because, because we were trying to impress the Fed that we had our CRA game right. So they are, they are the ones who push and push and push to make these regulations more relevant and more effective for the current day. So thank you for what milestone you've been able to accomplish with this. And I know there's a webinar coming up so that we can all learn more about the implications of this bill. I don't have the details with me, but sign up for the web webinar to learn more about uh, what this the evolution of CRA means. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with, with many friends, many folks that have made this happen, my banking partners, the mayor, our council folks, and growth. Um, you know, Birmingham is known as the magic city, and, and that's because there were three special ingredients and resources that, that made Birmingham, enabled Birmingham to become a major industrial activity economic development hub for decades and decades. Well, that tradition continues today with three other magic ingredients, and, and these ingredients is, is what has spurred this type of development. So the first ingredient is the city of Birmingham, with Mayor Woodfin and, and the council's commitment to redevelop the city's neighborhoods and build affordable housing and, and, and increase the quality of life. Second in, in, ingredient, it couldn't happen without any of these, but NCRC's growth initiative, who they're directly engaged in boots on the ground, dealing with sticks and bricks and finances and city regs and city and, and all of that, uh, and absolutely critical to make that happen. I've always said, you know, it's where the rubber meets the road. Growth is where the rubber meets the road. Now, the third ingredient is the banking community. You see a lot of great, great names up here, my friends, that represent these institutions. And, and, and we have collectively provided the critical capital that, that growth uses directly to do all this hard work. And believe me, it's hard work. Um, I, I know that, 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 that Ed was intimately involved in this and having weekly conversations with the city folks to deal with each and everything to get it to a point where you could, you could do this, you know, get the bulldozers out here and, and all that work. That's not an easy task. So, um, you know, Oak Hill is a direct result of that. Woodlawn, Pratt City, more and more to come, I'm sure, and I sure hope so. So we, we talked about, you know, and we all know this, for, for decades and decades, you know, our, our inner city communities, our rural communities, they suffered from a tremendous disinvestment for lots of many reasons. And that when CRA was passed in 1977, it laid out the spirit and intent for banks to engage in many areas of community development, particularly relating to low and moderate income people and low and moderate income communities. So last week, the third revision came out. It's only 1,500 pages, so <laughs> why go to a webinar when you've got 1,500 pages to read, right? 
I look forward to having somebody tell me about it too. I, I gleaned through it last week, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" So, uh, but but it's a good thing our society and, and our technology pieces—they've all evolved over these many, many, many years. And and this was a, a, a uh, an effort to try to update it to include all those things that uh, or that, that we know as a modern society and a changed society from the 1977. So um, you know that's launched. Off. It's it, it's written. It's in the books. We'll go forward with it and continue to uh, make that work for the betterment of the communities that we're in. Well, Regions is really proud to be part of, of this particular partnership as well as many other partnerships. And I know my banking partners are equally as proud to be part of this. We all each have a commitment. We have thoughtfulness. We have, we're truly roll up our sleeves to do the, the hard work that's really necessary to get to extraordinary partnerships like this that, that can help and make our communities better, fill in those gaps, build affordable housing, and, and there's more and more to come. And we just look forward to lots more of this. So thank you for the partnership. Thanks for the magic city ingredients that made this happen. We can't do it without everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. I want to I want to take a moment to thank the city of Birmingham, Mayor Woodfin, the council, and NCRC Growth for putting people first and making a positive difference in our community. My name is Alex Morton. I'm the Birmingham Market President for First Horizon, and we seek out opportunities to support communities in which we live and work. At First Horizon, we utilize our capital and our council to make a positive difference with our clients. Our partnership with the city and with NCRC helps support over five families in the pursuit of the American dream of buying a home. That's capital. You see the, the, the blue sign over there with, uh, with our opportunities for grants and things we're doing that's on the ground that makes a difference. And, um, and these programs at, at First Horizon were instrumental in helping revitalize this community of Oak Hill. In addition to our traditional role of providing capital, we also provide counsel and guidance for economic development organizations in our communities we serve. Uh, one example of this is one of our local executives. He couldn't be here today, but Dr. Anthony Hood, he serves on the Board of Commissioners of the Housing Authority of Birmingham District, who in partnership with the City of Birmingham Mayor's Office and agencies such as NCRC, helped secure over $50 million in Ch Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant from HUD. Combined with other investments, we're going to help support affordable housing, infrastructure, and overall revitalization of the historic neighborhoods of Smithfield, Graymont, and the College Hill neighborhoods. So I'd like to personally thank Kamika Holyfield, Ken Crenshaw, Dr. Anthony Hood, and many associates of our bank. That's right. Who, through their efforts of supporting Birmingham with both their capital and their council. So thank you very much. Um, so, first of all, let me start out by thanking the mayor. Mayor Woodfin, it's a pleasure. I mean it, always, for us. Uh, look, I, people are snickering. Let me, tell you, let me tell you something. You guys have no idea how lucky you are to have a mayor like Randall Woodfin. I'm telling you. I'm all over the country. Nobody like Randall Woodfin. Nobody. That's not hyperbole. Um, let me thank the counselors. Thank you for being here, as always, and supporting us. I really, really appreciate it. We couldn't do it without you. We know it. Let me thank the folks we work with in community development. Where are you, please? There you are. Thank you. Corey, Courtney, I'm gonna I'm gonna screw this up. Niles, I, look, I'm not gonna get everybody right. Doctor Venable, uh, Megan Megan Venable Thomas is not here, but please pass along our thanks as well. Uh, Kelvin Datcher, where are you, brother? Kelvin Datcher, there he is. He's always hanging. Is there a game on? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I'm doing important work. And it doesn't include you. <laughs> I love Kelvin. He knows that. Um, 
this is a little bit of an out-of-body experience. Um, what are we doing? We're celebrating a law. I mean, seriously. Who celebrates laws? I mean, very, very few. What'd you say? Well, we're doing it. I know we're doing it. But I mean, think about it. Think about some of the other major laws in this country. We don't spend time celebrating. Um, the Affordable Care Act, for example. There's no parties for the Affordable Care Act. And the reason is because of what you see behind you and around you and what you'll see in other communities as well. The mayor mentioned this. I'm going to pick up on his theme. Redlined communities. Communities that were redlined by the federal government in the 1930s. NCRC did a study and came out in March. 75% of those communities redlined in the 1930s are still impoverished today. So if you think CRA, eh, it's a law passed in 77, doesn't really mean much. It do, you know, now, one could say, well, geez, what have you gotten done if 75%? Without CRA, we don't get access to bank capital. Now, maybe the banks would do it out of the goodness of their hearts. Maybe. Um, don't, I, I'm not a skeptic. <laughs> not much of one. But honestly, it helps tremendously that CRA puts community organizations in the middle of conversations about banks that want to merge, that want to acquire, that want to open branches because of, a, of, the, of the rating that they get from their regulators about how well they do on CRA. And that's what gets this money invested. And by the way, while I'm on the subject, let me move aside so you can see the name of the banks that are supporting us. And if your name isn't up there and you're a bank, where are you? Why aren't we working with you? Uh, please, let's find a way to work together. We've got a lot of work to do in this community. Um, we're slated to do 95 homes immediately over the first three neighborhoods that the mayor mentioned. Smithfield would bring another 60. We have plans to do about 450 homes here. That investment is about 95 plus million dollars as we count it. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And I'm not, it's, it's, not, it's not our money, it's bank money. It's money's bank, banks have invested with us to make this difference. So, if you see a banker from one of these institutions, thank them. If you see a banker who's not one of these institutions, coax them to become investors. <laughs> Last thing I'll say is this. Um, I think my time is up. <laughs> uh, somebody did that on purpose, didn't they? Was that you, Kelvin? <laughs> Um, honestly, uh, thank you to First Horizons, thank you to Regions, thank you to all these banks, and to those of you we don't know yet, we're coming for you. Uh, one other thing, if you have a chance to advocate for something, the use of philanthropic dollars, for the benefit of consumers, not for us, for the people who buy these homes, interest rates are almost 8%, in fact they are 8% in many places. That's unaffordable for most of the folks we care about. There is a way to solve this problem. It's called interest rate buy-down. Permanent interest rate buy-down. If we can find eight points of the mortgage up front, we can buy down the interest rate 2% or 200 basis points. That's a huge difference. It's over 225 bucks a month on about a $1,500 a month mortgage and it saves the consumers who, who get the benefit of it around $80,000 over the life of their loan. Interest rate buy-down. Remember you heard it here. Ask about it. Talk to banks, foundations, others. We need capital to help consumers buy who want to have a chance to be homeowners. That's what we're here for. So thank you all for your time and effort. Thank you for continuing this good work. Look forward to working with all of you. Thank you again. Oh, tell them when the seminar is.
Okay, uh, just, uh, <laughs> the webinar is on NCRC's website. So that's ncrc.org. So if you're interested in not reading 1,500 pages and being able to look at a webinar, and maybe you can stay awake through that. But, uh, but anyway, that's ncrc.org. I want to thank all of you for coming. I want to thank especially our members of Building Alabama Reinvestment, NCRC members here in Birmingham. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, bankers. Thank you, city councilors. Uh, thank you, supportive citizens. All right. As I said, this is a great group of advocates. Uh, it's an all-star team, and uh, we got a lot of work to do, but I know looking out there at the audience, that we're able to do it. So thanks, everybody.